Greetings, fellow exiles. I've been in the need for a bigger, better extension cord for quite a while. So my dad gave me this one. The only problem with it is where he works, they uh, handle food. So any damage to an extension cord or anything like that, they have to throw it out. So uh, they cut it in half. So what I did on the other end, has the other half has the male end. And I added for the female end this, making it the ultimate extension cord. So uh, watch the video on how I made this puppy. It should make my life a whole lot easier for power tools, lights, whatever I need. So stay tuned and see what I did. Okay, so when you're cutting through an extension cord or any thick cord like that, you don't want to like slice through it. You'll cut the ins inner insulation, uh, the insulation of the inner wires. So you just want to put the knife on there and rock it back and forth. And then bend it and see how far you did. Until you do that, and then you get all the slowly get all the way around like that. Might take a little while, but it's worth it. So you don't have to either repair the inner insulation or cut it all off and start over again and lose some of the cord. Rain reliever on. Uh, make sure you put the rubber. Make sure you I almost screwed up. Make sure you put the nut on. Then the rubber piece and make sure you go in the right order or else you'll have to undo everything and take it all apart. Then this part of the strain reliever comes through the hole I knocked out in the box. Fish the wires through there. Then the rubber goes in there and And what the strain reliever does is so when this cord gets caught on something or somebody pulls on it or anything like that, the cord is pulling it against the box instead of against the back of the screws on the back of the outlets. So next thing we got to do is strip the wires. And if you look on the back of an outlet, kind of hard to see but right there is a little rectangle box there we go that's a little bit better that box tells you how much wire you're supposed to strip off I have no idea what gauges extension cord is so we will say 10 gauge and just be careful in case it's bigger than 10 gauge and I say be careful and I accidentally squeeze hard and nope all right let's try 12 gauge That seemed to do the trick. So I'll get the rest of these stripped, show you how to put them into the outlet. All right, I'm putting in a GFCI outlet. You see these in kitchens and bathrooms. If the outlet gets shorted out or something happens, it'll trip the circuit breaker in here and shut everything. This and all the outlets after it off. And if you notice, this one has this funny little shape that this guy doesn't. That's because this is a 20 amp outlet. But even though this is a 20 amp outlet, you have to remember that the other end of the cord is a 15 amp plug. So I can plug 20 amp stuff into here, but I still have to be careful how much power I draw. And this is also a 15 amp. But if you plug in too much power through this one 
and then another, like, a 10 and a 5 in here, that's your 15. And you plug another 10 in here, you'll still melt this one because you're, then you're over 20. Or melt the other end of the cord. So this has the sticker on the back of it. It says that this is the load side. So this is the side that comes, the line side that comes from the power source. So what we do is you take the black one and it hooks to the gold. And the way I always remember it, it's black gold, like, uh, oh, Jedediah Clampett and found on the Beverly Hillbillies. And you want to make sure all the strands of wire get tucked into there so they don't touch anything and short out. And then for some reason, the white wire is colored blue in here. I know that one should be the white because that one's black and that one's green. So this is the neutral. It gets plugged into the white one. Because white one goes with white one. Even if the white's blue. And if you're watching this and you're colorblind, you're probably really confused now. Now the green one hooks to the ground screw, or the green one we are going to hook to the ground screw down here in the bottom, uh, right in there. So for thinner, most household wires will fit through this loop, through the hole in here to make the loop. I don't know if this is gonna if this one will fit. It is twelve, so it should, twelve gauge, so it should fit. Yep. And that little hole is designed so when you bend it over, you get a nice hook to wrap around the screw. And that hook should wrap around this way. So as you tighten the screw, you tighten the hook into the wire instead of loosening it. If you put the screw the other way, the hook will straighten out as the screw tightens. Now we'll take the stickers off of this side. And we'll take these short wires that I cut off earlier, we're gonna strip them and wire the two outlets together. So let me strip these and I'll show you that, how that works. Got the two outlets wired together. But before we stick the cover on, we got two clearance issues. One, these tabs that are for a different style outlet. And these tabs here, which are for a different way of installing the outlet. So these just break off. And I've heard of people that grew up in the Depression saving these little guys and then using them later as washers for stuff. Like, I know those people that lived through the Depression are thrifty, but washers aren't that expensive. <laughs> That's actually what the pliers on the end of this are for, but they kind of suck.
And you can snap all of them off, but it doesn't make a difference. You just need to snap off the ones that are in the way. And then break these off over here. And they're designed to just break off that way, no matter which style of outlet or which fixture you're putting the outlets in, you have all the, you don't have to buy special outlets for each because that would drive contractors nuts with all the stuff they'd have to store. And then we just screw the outlets in. Screw the outlets to the face plates. And then we'll screw the face plate down. And I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch me uh, turn a screwdriver for the next few minutes because that'd be boring and I'd fast forward through it. Into recording and stuff and didn't notice that gap there in the outlet's not clearing here. Not sure why that is. I've never seen that before. It's harder than it looks to manage a camera, microphones, and tools all at the same time. <laughs> this snaps off or we can snap this tab off and see what that gains us oh that tab does not want to snap off there we go okay looks like this little hole here is in the way, but that doesn't look like it's designed to snap off. That's where your screw was going in. Yeah, and the screw goes into that hole, so let's bend that out of the way and see what happens for the fit. Okay, looks like this ear is in the way. We gotta snap that one off too. Well, that's where I was putting the screws in. I don't think the screws are just going to stay in these other holes. Well, that one seems to stay all right. Nope, that one just slides through. Let's see if the little tab we broke off the other. Hey, look at that. You can use the little tab as a nut. The little tabs we broke off of here. I don't know if that's what they're intended to do, but that's what we're gonna do. I've never seen that before. Well, I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me do screws. We got outlets wired in, screw the face plate on, and the 
the face plate connects the grounds from the outlets to the ground wire in the back of the screw, or back of the box that we just put in with the screw. And this gives us GFI per, GFCI protection on both of them. Plenty of power here and two USB ports to charge your cell phone or any other USB stuff. Let me grab the tester and plug this puppy in. And we'll see if we burn down the house. Yell if you see a bunch of sparks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, this is a little outlet tester. Everybody should own one of these. You just plug it in the outlet, the lights will turn on, and then you can look at the little code on the back of it that's upside down. No, it was right side up, just blurry. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Anyway, there's the code that tells you what the lights are, so when you plug this in, hit the test button, hit the reset button, and the little light turned on. Just plug this guy in. Two orange lights, that means that outlet's good. Two orange lights, that means that. Two orange lights, that one means that one's good. So, we got ourselves the ultimate extension cord. Thank you, thank you for joining me on the journey. Here. Thank you for joining me on the journey to use God's gifts to grow His kingdom, uh, prepare for the future, or live a better life and prepare for the future. I hope you find this useful and have a great day.